As the Green Star Rises is a science fantasy novel by American writer Lynn Carter. Published in 1976, it is the fourth, and penultimate, novel in his Green Star series, continuing from By the Light of the Green Star. Plot summary As Karn and Klygon betrayed by Delgan on a deserted islet wait for either an inevitable end by drowning for the green star has risen, and a tide with it—threatening to swamp the islet, they hear the swish of oars. Karn then calls out to the ship just prior to losing consciousness and the two are then taken on board. The ship, named Exothan after a large, inland sea-dwelling reptile is captained by blue barbarians led by the nasty, brutish Hagor, who sends the two below decks as slave rowers. Their companions include select citizens of Comer, a peaceful mercantile kingdom recently conquered and ravaged by the barbarians under the chieftainship of a mysterious warlord. Immune to their racial madness including its ruler Andar, the ship is on its way to Comer's ally Tharkun to espy it out for conquest—which Irian deems as foolish due to Tharkun being ruled by a wizard. One day, Irian states that they approach the Angzer Reefs, an area of unpredictable storms—which prompts some of the desperate Comerians to hope for a quick death. However, it gives Klygon some hope, and he asks Karn if he should pick the locks a skill Karn did not know Klygon possessed. The prospect pleases Irian and Andar, who figure on using their release and the storm to retake the Exothan. When the storm strikes, the Comarians released by Klygon's lock picking storm up the decks and attack the Blue Barbarians. When Karn runs up to enjoy his first re-taste of freedom, Hagor crashes into him, Karn jumps on Hagor and strangles him—strengthened as a residual effect of the elixir of light, and further by sheer rage—and is then swept overboard. Shortly after the storm the Zaka carrying a woman Aryala, lands on the stern—and Aryala alights while the tired Zaka takes off elsewhere. The Zaka carrying Raladix and the two women lands on an island. The two flee in opposite directions to escape Raladix, Neve, into a structure and Aryala into jungled area. Inside the structure, Neve disturbs a large serpent or Salath and flees promptly outside. Raladix has meanwhile pursued Aryala, who escapes after scratching him to create such opportunity. She jumps on the Zaka to escape, then hears a voice calling and wonders whether it is Neve whom she doesn't really like or Raladix from whom she is fleeing in terror. Neve manages to grab the bridle of the Zaka as Aryala takes off. Raladix, finding the Zaka gone, explores further and finds a tubular craft which can fly. And energizes it. In the seawater, Karn hears a voice claiming to be Shan, a young boy from Kamadong, another treetop city, and swims to Shan's rescue. Shan guides Karn to an island. Due to certain reactions of Shan, Karn deduces that Shan is an adolescent girl, he starts loving her, at least platonically, feeling guilty for deserting Neve. The two construct a hut and survive for a time. One day, Shan sees an airborne craft coming towards her. As Karn asks for its description, Shan is kidnapped by the craft's occupant. As described in the ending of the article by the light of the green star, Janchan has stopped the sky sled. Unfortunately, he stopped it suddenly and struck his head on the windshield. Knocking him unconscious alongside Zarka. When he comes to, he finds Zarka conscious. And Nimbalim warning them they are in serious danger, as the sled is held in a exif's web. Janchan tries cutting through the strands, but they are too thick, and prepares to face the XOPH with his sword no mean task, due to the XOPH being about elephant-sized. Zarka then reminisces that it would be nice if he had the Zukar, whereupon Janchan remembers another Kalud weapon, a vial of liquid flame. When Zarka tells him that Karn had taken it, Janchan tells him of another which he had brought on board, he takes it out, and aims it at the XOPH, incinerating it and setting its web on fire, which weakens it enough for the re-energized sky sled to part. 
Zarka then follows the mined trail of Raladix to the inland sea, and a small island where they continue searching till Zarka loses the trail. The liberated Exothan has, meantime, reached Tharkun where Andar asks its ruler Paramus for aid against the Blue Barbarians. Paramus confesses that he has no great fleet, but does have one large Kaluta manufactured advanced airship. The two then plan the invasion, from the Comarians by sea and the Tharkunians by air. Two delays are then caused when a small aircraft comes in front of Paramus' airship and is shot down. Paramus lands the airship on an island looks to see if any have survived, and is reassured by Janchan and Zarka that only some of the enamel was scratched, and then dispatches a group of warriors to help them extract the sky sled. Traveling further over the island named Narjix with Janchan, Zarka and Klygon who has boarded the Tharkunian ship, Paramus spots a young boy—whom Klygon recognizes as Karn. As the Tharkunians set down to rescue him, he is attacked by the Salath and rescued when Zarka pursues the monster and makes it attack and destroy itself. Paramus then treats Karn's eyes, bandaging them with medicines, in hope of restoring his eyesight. Meanwhile, the Comarians aboard the Exothan, disguised as blue barbarians but not with disguises that will pass muster under strong light enter their capital's harbour. Andar attempts to bluff his way past the harbour sentry and finds out to dismay that the warlord has returned. He quickly kills the sentry, and fights his way to the palace where he meets the warlord. Finding the warlord's swordplay skills to be as good as his own unlike the rudimentary skills of the blue barbarians as a whole. Andar is almost killed by the warlord, but narrowly escapes due to his own slipping—during which the warlord slips behind a panel leading to many catacombs where Andar does not pursue him, as this would take too long. The Comarians fight their way to the palace roof, where there is an idol of their god Kuroga. At that point, several of the Comarians, including Ozod from the Exothan are killed by lightning blasts from a weapon the Zukar held by the warlord—who forces Andar and surviving supporters to drop their weapons. However, at that moment, Paramu's airship arrives, and uses a combination of the airship's laser, electric cannon and his archers to inflict a reverse on the barbarians. Converted to a crushing defeat as the Comarians now re grab their weapons. After the battle, Karn tests whether the treatment worked and is able to see the green star rising through a gap in the planet's cloud cover. Just then, a tubular aircraft comes in over Comer with two occupants fighting in the cockpit. Janchan recognizes one as Raladix, shouting his name, and Karn recognizes the other by voice as Shan. To be corrected as Janchan also sees her and shouts her real name, Neve. Neve finishes the struggle by stabbing Raladix with a small knife, the Avenger of Chastity, carried inside their garments by all Leonis women, and attempts to land the craft. Just then, Karn sees Delgan the warlord, jump inside, and a new struggle between Delgan and Neve, but is too far away to help. However, one of the Tharkunian archers, Zorak, jumps into the cockpit to see if he can kill the warlord. As the craft flies out of Comer into the trees, Janchan and Zarka follow at a distance in the sky sled. They see a body fall from the craft, but cannot identify which of the three occupants fell. Aryala tells Karn and Janchan that Neve had lost her grip on the Zaka's bridle. Aryala, being inexperienced at controlling the huge bird and also needing, in any case, to flee from Raladix was unable to rescue her from the water. The 1976 sequel to this novel, In the Green Star's Glow was the conclusion of the Green Star series.